so let's start. My name is Sherar Idris. Uh, I am uh, you're going to be your host for today's uh, webinar. Welcome to DK Insights. This is a, a series of informative talks that we are uh, scheduling uh, from time to time and where we, we are actually bringing to you some great speakers, uh, some experts who talk about different subjects which are relevant, which are interesting to know about and of course uh, make an impact when it comes to our own professions, our own lives. So another one of the, that uh, series happening today. And uh, today I'll just talk about uh, the speaker uh, first, uh, who is uh, none other than uh, Omar Moin Malik. Omar is uh, currently serving as the Group Executive Director and Head of uh, Digital Wallets and Payments at Telenor Bank. And Telenor Bank, uh, if you're not aware, uh, is actually the custodian and the owner of uh, the leading service, which is Easy Pesa uh, in Pakistan. Also, Omar uh, is an expert in the mobile money business and service category. Uh, so he's, he's a great and eminent leader in this particular space, a technologist at heart. And as far as I know, Omar uh, and I've worked with him uh, at least uh, you know, uh, for a part of his career. Uh, with him, uh, he comes across as a, as a very real and genuine thinker. Uh, he approaches uh, his problems and his challenges in a very real way, uh, putting the customer at the center. And uh, this really, I'm not, uh, you know, making this statement as something which is which is a cliche, but uh, that's very uh, true uh, in 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 case of Omar, uh, because he he solves the problem in a way that uh, you know creates value in the end for the end consumer as well as uh, you know has benefits uh, for the complete value chain, which, which is extremely important for any service to actually survive and flourish. Uh, and that is uh, what you actually find uh, when it comes to Easy Pesa uh, in, in the country as uh, one of the leading services is, is actually, uh, and actually the leading service, um, I would say, in Pakistan. So uh, for today's session, uh, when it comes to uh, the subject, Omar is uh, going to be talking about how uh, the digital wallets and uh, payment space is uh, evolving in Pakistan. And also, uh, when it comes to Easy Pesa, uh, what all is necessary in terms of the key success factors of uh, having an awesome app uh, for consumers. And also all the way to you know what ecosystem enablers are pivotal uh, for this particular journey to continue on. Uh, also, in a way, uh, he'll be talking about uh, what is important uh, when it comes to the fintech sector for the entrepreneurial world to actually um, take their success uh, and also benefit from uh, the overall development which is happening around and how they should be actually pivoting. Also, uh, I think uh, there is a definite outcome uh, which is, um, you know, embedded in this uh, particular journey uh, for the overall economy. Uh, and uh, and we would also understand uh, from Omar how, uh, you know, this would kind of evolve uh, in terms of uh, the overall environment, which is cash based today in the country and how would actually it evolve and, you know, transit into uh, uh, the digital space and uh, have some headway uh, in that particular direction. So all this and, and a lot more, uh, I would say in this uh, exciting uh, session uh, that we are looking forward to. So I can't wait uh, to actually hand it over to Omar, but before I do that, uh, I, would, uh, I would definitely say that, uh, you know, any, any questions that you may be having, uh, just put them in the, in the comments uh, section in your uh, Facebook uh, and YouTube and we'll be collecting those and looking at them towards the end of the session. And uh, Omar will uh, will try to address them uh, as much as uh, the time would allow, uh, hopefully all of them, uh, inshallah. So uh, let's uh, look forward to it. And also, um, you know, just keep tuned, uh, you know, keep track of uh, our uh, online space as far as the Daftar Khan and Hindsight's company is concerned for more of the future talks. Uh, on this, on related topics, as well as the other uh, topics that we would uh, keep picking in future as well. So uh, without further ado, uh, now I will hand it over uh, to Omar Moin Malik. Omar, welcome to DK Insights. 
Assalamu alaikum and thank you very much, Shaya. Thank you very much for the kind words. So um, I have a small presentation uh, that uh, I'm just going to share right now. Let's see. I hope you can uh, you can all see uh, my slides. Um, not a very detailed presentation, just a few couple of slides to give you an idea of uh, of what Easy Pesa is and uh, what Easy Pesa does in Pakistan. Our objective is is very simple. We want to digitize financial uh, transactions in the country for everybody in the country. So um, just let me give you guys uh, a background and some key statistics in Pakistan. We have about 220 million people, that's the population, uh, out of which 110 million adults, uh, meaning these are people above 18 years of age and have been issued an Adra ID card by the government. Now let's focus on three uh, key sectors. One is the banking sector, the other one is the telco sector, and then we have the payments uh, sector. Within the banking sector, we have about 40 plus uh, banks operating in Pakistan. These are all the commercial banks, uh, the microfinance banks, the government banks, and the special purpose banks uh, that operate. Um, and then we have 15,000 bank branches and about 15,000 ATMs across the country. Um, now, just looking at these numbers, if you look at the 220 million people being served by 15,000 bank branches and 15,000 ATMs, uh, the per capita uh, number of bank branches that we have or, or the number of people per capita per branch or per ATM is a, is a very staggeringly high number. So when you compare this number with other countries, um, especially our neighbors in, in the South Asian region, uh, you'd be surprised to know that Nepal, uh, countries like Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India, they have more bank branches uh, per capita. They have more ATMs per capita than Pakistan. We're actually um, absolutely dead last in the South Asian region. Uh, going forward, uh, we have about 40 million bank accounts in the country. So out of the 110 million adults that we have, only 40 million are banked. Now, this is not something to be proud of, given that you know we've had, we've had the banking sector up and running for the last 70 odd years. It's a very low number. Um, and that 40 million is actually the total number of bank accounts. But if you look at people or unique customers who have bank accounts, we only have about 25 million bank customers, you know, people having multiple bank accounts. When you look at the telco sector, now this is a sector that um, we worked in, both Sharyar and me have worked in pretty extensively. Uh, we have four cellular telcos today, uh, but we have more than 150 million SIMs, active SIMs in the market. And because it's a multi-SIM market, we have about 90 million mobile customers um, in Pakistan. Out of these 90 million unique mobile customers, uh, about 40 million are actually using smartphones and uh, about 50 million are still using feature phones. And this num these numbers are changing. Of course, the smartphones are, are growing uh, in penetration and the number of feature phones are being left out because all the new phones that you see in the market are actually smartphones. Um, and then looking at the payment space, you have about 2 million plus retail merchants. Now, these are fixed structure merchants. So I'm not even talking about the average telewalas or, or the mobile small uh, shops that you have. These are fixed structure shops, 2 million retail merchants as per AC Nielsen. Um, and we have a total retail payment market of about $200 billion annually. Out of the 2 million retail merchants, we have only 35,000 POS devices. These are these uh, devices where you can actually go and use a credit card or a debit card. So only 35,000 POS devices out there in the market. And about 40 million debit cards issued. Of course, this is, this is a number which corresponds to the number of bank accounts. And every bank account opened in the country, by default, you get a, uh, a Visa or a MasterCard, uh, a debit card. It's actually called an ATM debit card. And hence, 99.9% .9 of all transactions that happen for retail payments in the country actually happen on cash. 
So Pakistan is a very, very heavy cash, a cash heavy country. Uh, digital payments have a very, very small share in the market as of now. On the next slide, I just have an article over here and I'd, I'd like to read out a few lines. This is not a very old article, it's a very recent article. So this got published about a month ago. Um, but the, um, uh, the, cash in the currency in circulation ratio to the overall bank deposits uh, in Pakistan are standing at about 30%. And these are, this, this, this figure is probably the highest in the world. So the amount of cash which has been used compared to the deposits that we have in our bank accounts, 30% uh, is actually money which is in cash, which is not in the banking sector. Now, a lot of you must be thinking, you know, okay, so what's the big deal? People have cash and they need to make payments. So they make payments. I mean, does everybody really need a bank account? Um, and, and does everybody need to be doing digital payments? Well, that is where we come in, right? So that this is, this is our, uh, our purpose of existence. What we believe is that every Pakistani should be doing digital financial transactions. Because when you take cash payments and you make them digital, not only are they easy, they're convenient and they're safe. Unfortunately, cash is not easy. Cash is not convenient and cash is definitely not safe. So our purpose of existence is very simple, financial inclusion. We want to convert the informal economy, this huge informal economy in Pakistan, uh, to start using formal financial services. What does that do? Well, like I said, it offers secure, convenient and affordable financial services 24-7. It also democratizes all the financial services. So you don't have a segment of the country which has access to banking systems and banking services. And so they have access to these convenient, easy and safe. And for the vast majority of the population, um, dependent, totally dependent on cash. And when you're dependent on cash, you do not have access to credit uh, products or saving products. And this is very, very important. So the top of the pyramid, people like me, because we have digital financial services available, we have access to all of these uh, credit and saving products. But if you go to an average grocer or a, or a kiryani ki dukan, that poor chap probably cannot avail any credit, credit product because he doesn't have a, uh, a bank account. And hence nothing is documented. Who's gonna give him a, a, a loan, for example? There's no documentation. Um, Documented transactions minimize money laundering and terrorist financing. There is no uh, two bits about this. This is a this is a fact. Once you start documenting all your transactions, automatically your money laundering and terrorist financing and all the other ills in the society will go down. And then, of course, once you have document documented or digital financial transactions, you generate tax revenue for the government instead of the middleman. So let me be very clear over here that even people who don't have formal financial services today, they have a need to actually remit money or, or, or send money from point A to point B. They have a need to save money. They have a need for a loan. And for a loan, they go to a loan shark. And so what the loan shark charges them is beyond our, our wildest dreams. At times, 30%, 40%. Um, and for all other transactions, they use cash or informal services available. And you have all of this fee income being generated, but that's going into the informal sector. So the government is unable to collect any tax revenue on cash transactions. It's all, it all goes to the middleman. And then digital payments actually grease the wheels of a digital economy. You cannot have a digital economy without digital payments. Very, very simple. Um, very quickly, um, I'll just go over the Easy Pesa storyline because Easy Pesa is now a, a, a household name. So everybody kind of knows about Easy Pesa. But this is, we started off in 2008. Uh, it was part of our telco strategy, Telnor Pakistan, of course. 
the branchless banking regulations were issued by the central bank, uh, which said that, look, if you want to do any sort of money or, or, or payment transactions, you have to be working as a bank. Uh, so we went looking for a banking partner and we partnered up with a small microfinance bank called Tamil Microfinance Bank at that time. There was a virtual JV that came into play. There was a 51% acquisition by Telenor Pakistan as well uh, for governance purposes. And we launched our services on the 15th of October, 2009. I remember the date. Um, our initial services were all OTC services. So there was a huge agent sign up that we actually uh, went into um, because over the counter services, and I'll explain what over the counter services are. Over the counter services only work when you have a large network of agents because we were doing branchless banking. So we actually had to set up these shops all over Pakistan where a customer could go to and then do their transactions. Uh, there's a huge, large marketing drive. We spent a lot of money on, on, on category awareness. And, and, and as a result, um, Easy Pesa today is now a category brand. I mean, I often hear of people saying, Mujhe ye paise easy paisa kar do. Yaar, mujhe rupay easy paisa kar do. Um, we are actually very happy that Easy Pesa is now a category brand. Um, so, in the next four years, 2012 to 2016, we actually started focusing, we moved away from over-the-counter services uh, like bill payments and money transfer, and we started towards building our mobile accounts or our mobile wallets. And the purpose was that customers should be able to open their own account and they should be able to do transactions from their own account themselves. So initially, we had USSD uh, accounts. Uh, on the Telenor Pakistan network. So you had to have a Telenor SIM uh, in order to open a mobile account and use a mobile account. Um, we then went into digitizing a lot of our processes. Um, we had a lot of competition uh, then launch after us. So uh, uh, a lot of other telcos and a lot of banks uh, saw what we were doing and basically copied everything and, and came into branches banking as well. Uh, we focused very heavily on interoperability. Uh, so the fact that you should be able to move money from, say, any bank account to an easy PESA wallet and vice versa, or from one wallet to another wallet. Um, so we partnered with one link and we came on board their switch as the first uh, wallet player uh, to move funds between any of the from any of the bank accounts to the wallet, etc. Um, and we built new services like international remittances. We got a lot of G2P mandates, which are government to person payment mandates. I remember BISP uh, was something which came up at that time, EOPI disbursements and a lot of other uh, provincial government disbursements. So Zakat payments in Punjab and school fee uh, payments in Sindh, et cetera, et cetera. We also came up with uh, a line of lending and saving products. And then um, when the teleco uh, industry had this huge biometric drive where every SIM had to be verified uh, biometrically, we actually leveraged on that. Uh, and uh, I'm very proud to say that we went to the state bank and we got them to approve uh, the opening of wallets. Uh, so without, you know, we got rid of all the other documentation that we used to do. Um, and we could just, a customer could walk into one of our biometric agents, uh, you know, put his finger, give his fingerprint and, and open a wallet instantly. Um, we also had a 100% acquisition of the bank. Uh, the Tamir Microfinance Bank was acquired 100% by Telenor Group. Uh, and hence renamed as Telenor Bank, which is which is how it is today. And then we launched our digital payments because we said, look, retail and online payments is something which is a huge use case, and 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 that is um, that is why people actually want to be doing uh, want to uh, have a mobile wallet to begin with. So this is uh, an area that we focused, and we came up with an online payment platform. And then on the QR side, we had a lot of like Q, uh, sorry, on the payment side, retail payment side, we had QR and NFC and debit cards and whatnot. So the third chapter, which is 2016, 2020, this is where we actually started establishing our Easy Pesa app. The smartphone penetration in Pakistan was going up. A lot of people had smartphones. Um, an app actually enables us to be telco agnostic. So you don't have to have a particular SIM to use Easy Pesa, uh, use the Easy Pesa app. You can have any SIM in Pakistan and still use the Easy Pesa app. Um, I talked about the NFC and QR payments. Debit cards is something that we launched. So um, every Easy Pesa um, account uh, is accompanied with a debit card if you if you wish to purchase. And you can use this debit card at, at any ATM in Pakistan or at any shop uh, to make your payments. 
Um, we partnered with a lot of key uh, e-commerce players like Taraz, uh, and we did our Black Fridays and huge campaigns. So I'd be very proud of you. We established ourselves in the online space as well. Um, and then we got acquired by Ant Financial. So I'll talk a little bit more about Ant Financials, but this is, uh, this, this is um, part of the Alibaba group. Uh, and uh, Ant Financials is the, is the organization, is the fintech that uh, has a lot of other wallets um, in the world as well. Uh, not just easy pesa and after our acquisition again we focused on our tech platforms because we understand that as a fintech um typically when you look at all the other banks in the country uh their technology platforms are outsourced and hence um anything that they do it's not very agile it, it costs a lot of money etc cetera, etc cetera. if you talk about digital players like google and and whatsapps and you know you know who um, they own their own technology. It's, it's absolutely important to actually own your own technology because that's the only thing that gives you scalability uh, and a competitive edge. So we started focusing on our technology platforms and building our own technology platforms. We put together an in-house dev team. We came up with our new app, which is completely in-house built. I think one of the only apps in Pakistan uh, provided by any bank, which is built in-house. Uh, and now we are actually focusing on two things, digital partnerships, and a platform play. So what we are actually going out and telling a lot of businesses and a lot of companies is that, you know, we have a platform in place. Um, whatever you want to do, come on board. Let's build digital partnerships and, and uh, uh, we'll serve your customers as well as ours. And I'll give you more examples of how this is happening uh, in the latest slides. So moving to the next slide, I'll just talk about the Ant Financial family. Uh, Ant Financial is a global fintech business now valued at over $100 billion. Um, we are their wallet in Pakistan. In addition to Pakistan, they have about nine other wallets across the world. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with China, which is uh, Ali, Ali Pay is their wallet in China, about 900 million users over there. Uh, in Hong Kong, they have about uh, 2 million users on Ali Pay Hong Kong. In Philippines, they have a brand called Gcash, uh, 20 million users. In Korea, uh, Kakao Pay. In India, Ptm is, uh, is, I'm sure a lot of people in Pakistan know about Ptm as well. In Bangladesh, they have Bcash. Uh, Indonesia, they have Dana. Uh, touch and go in Malaysia and in Cambodia, they have uh, Crown Pay. So this is the entire overall family of the and the, the and financial family. And we work very closely and we we uh, we share a lot of experiences and, and technologies and best practices um, uh, in, in, in taking or building financial services for our customers. At a glance, I'm not going to spend too much time over here, but you know, we've done really well in 2019. We have about 30 million registered wallets on our platform, out of which we have 7 million 30 day active wallets. Uh, so that's a sizable number. Uh, but then again, that's not something that we're happy with. Uh, because there still are a lot of people in this country who are unbanked uh, and, in our view, underbanked. So even if they are banked with, uh, if they are using banking services, we believe them. They, they, we believe that they're underbanked in terms of the, in terms of what they can do uh, with those bank accounts. Um, so a little bit about our app. Uh, we introduced this app last year in April, so April two thousand nineteen, and. Um, this is a completely in-house app. Uh, I'm very proud of the uh, the IT teams and the product teams that we have in place who are actually uh, working on very hard in, in building and in building new services on this app. Um, we believe that at this moment, this is the best app out there for financial services. And uh, this offers customers just about everything that they would need to do uh, with the financial services app. So you can use this app to, to buy easy load or bundles across all telco operators. Uh, you can pay a, a wide range of bills. Actually, we, we have the largest uh, bill aggregator in Pakistan as compared to uh, any other bank. Uh, so electricity bills, gas bills, phone uh, bills, internet bills, school fee payments, credit card bills, government payments, loan repayments. I mean, we've got all of that. And then fund transfer. So you can actually move money to any other easy Pesa wallet or uh, any other bank account, or you can actually send money to any person's CNIC so that he can go to an easy Pesa shop and collect those things. I think very, very strong uh, value proposition that a lot of people use. 
And then we have QR payments. So we have thousands of online and offline merchants where you can actually go. Uh, we've actually partnered with MasterPass as well. So if any, if you walk into any merchant that has an Easy Pesa QR or a MasterPass QR, you can actually pay from your app right there and then. And all payments are instant. Uh, we've partnered with a lot of digital partners like Kareem and Daraz uh, very recently with the Motorway MTAC. Uh, and so you can actually top up those wallets as well. So when I travel, whenever the lockdown ends, when I travel from Samba to Lahore, uh, I'll just top up my MTAG using my Easy Peso wallet and I don't have to do anything else. Um, in, the, um, in the Ramadan time and of course during the COVID-19 period, donations are a huge big thing. So we have a lot of partner NGOs uh, and then we also collect government uh, donations for the COVID-19 and the TAM fund. So those are there. We have a debit card that I talked about and any, any Easy Peso app user can get. We have ticket purchases, so airlines, railways, bus ticketing, movie ticketing, event ticketing, all of that is available in the app real time. And then, of course, very recently, we've done, uh, we've, we've built a new product, which is which is pretty amazing, actually. Uh, so even if you are a bank account user, you may have uh, your bank account with any other bank in Pakistan. You can still use the Easy Pesa app by linking your debit card. Uh, into the Easy Pesa app, and then you can actually make payments from that app. Right? Uh, you can actually pull funds and, and and do everything. So this is huge, because a lot of the other bank, uh, a lot of the banks in Pakistan, they do have their apps out there, but the functionality that we offer, as compared to the functionality offered by other bank uh, banking apps, I mean Zamina So it's a it's a huge difference. Um, very quickly, I'll wrap this up. Food ordering, that's something new that we've taken out. So a lot of customers can now use the Easy Pesa app. We partnered with a uh, player called Eat Mubarak. Uh, so you can actually order food through the app and you can track your food delivery in the Easy Pesa app itself. Uh, we have a, uh, a list of insurance products available also. So life, health, mobile screen, insurance, and then international remittances. We, we have partner uh, remittance companies across the world, and uh, you can actually receive remittances right into your Easy Pesa app. And just on the app itself, I mean, we have a Google Play Store rating over here. So uh, these are these are stats from the first of January. So if you see, I mean, we have about ten million total downloads uh, in in Pakistan. Uh, I think if you sum up all of the other apps, we have more more downloads than all the other apps available in Pakistan, all the other financial services apps available in Pakistan. And we have a pretty decent Play Store rating. We are, in terms of reviews, we are like way ahead of everybody else. Uh, and it's only a 20 MB app. So for all those listening, uh, if you don't have the Easy Pesa app, you can just go ahead and download it. It's free. Um, I'll just skip this slide because I've talked about the digital payments and the partnerships that we've built. But uh, very quickly, I, you know, we have all the telco players and we've partnered with them for uh, for airtime and bundle top ups. Uh, we're doing a lot more partnerships with uh, with Eat Mubarak, with Food Panda, uh, Kareem Uber. We really want to be the the app uh, that everybody looks to as a platform, uh, and so they can come on board and they can partner with us to actually extend the reach of their services to their customers and our customers as well. Now, now let's, let's talk about COVID-19. I think Sharia alluded to, to this in his intro as well. Um, Pakistan went into lockdown in, in, in March. We're sitting in June. So we've already spent about three or four months in, in a lockdown. And, and um, when are things going to improve? We don't know. But what we do see happening right now is that branch banking has rapidly diminished, diminished in value. Um, and what you see is like bank branches or ATMs and even cash in general now, it's perceived to be a health hazard by customers. Um, even the WHO came up with a, a report recently where they said that currency or, or physical cash uh, could be one of the leading um, uh, causes of how uh, COVID-19 is being spread. Uh, and I think anybody who's been in Pakistan um, and, and seen how uh, currency notes are, are uh, counted, uh, especially if you have a lot of currency notes, you'll see that you know people have a habit of sticking their fingers in their mouths from time to time. So I, I for one, am not a big fan of, of carrying cash right now or, or doing anything with cash right now. Um, 
So digital banking is, of course, the need of the hour, and uh, it's becoming a new norm. What we see is that uh, a lot of our transactions have spiked. So our registrations have doubled. Um, in the next point, I talk about IBFT transactions. The state bank took a very um, calculated step, actually, uh, and, and waived off the IBFT fee for all banks, uh, for all customers across banking. Um, and what you see now is that digital payments through IBFT have actually uh, doubled. In our case, they've tripled. Uh, so a lot of customers are now sending money to bank accounts and then vice versa. We also see that a lot of government programs are now focusing solely on digital solutions for, for disbursements and collections. Uh, one of the reasons is because this is a much more safe way to go about dispersing money, in, especially in the COVID time. Um, also, um, digital disbursements are actually documented and, and they can be a complete recon that you can do very easily. Cash disbursements are very, very hard to track uh, and monitor. And then what we see is that, you know, for a long time, we've been in Pakistan for about 10 years, uh, Easy Pes has been around. And, you know, in these 10 years, we had been going out and talking to a lot of uh, businesses and merchants and trying to get them to come on board and start accepting digital payments. But what we see now is that, I mean, we literally, our floodgates have been opened. We have a lot of requests coming in from a lot of merchants, from a lot of partners, who want to sign up because it's not a matter of uh, of uh, good to have uh, digital payments anymore. It's a matter of survival. So there are businesses which are completely shut down uh, and they know that they have to move away from cash. Um, so they are moving to digital payments. This is the only way out. What we hope is whenever the COVID situation ends and we get down to the new normal or the old normal, um, we hope that the behaviors, uh, the digital payment behaviors continue. So in this time period, customers should be able to see the value of actually doing uh, digital uh, transactions. In fact, one of our very strong beliefs is that anybody who downloads the Easy Pesa app and, and is able to do at least three transactions on the Easy Pesa app, um, we are very sure that, that that customer becomes loyal to us and then will not, will not go back to any... Uh, other traditional uh, payment methods. And then of course there are some myths, right? So um, a lot of people say, isn't this the service that you know you send use to send money from shops? I mean, this is something that my Khan Sama uses. This is something that my security guard uses. Why do I have to use these pesa? Well, yes, we have the over-the-counter services there, um, but our mobile wallet is a completely different thing. And that's actually for customers with smartphones. Uh, so download the Easy Pesa app and 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 see for yourself um, whether it adds value to you or not. Um, I already I think I already talked about this where people say I already have a bank account. Do I need to use Easy Pesa? Well, I can for for one you know guarantee that whatever bank account that you have or whatever banking app that you use, if just download the Easy Pesa app and you see that you know we offer far more services and a much better customer experience than than any other banking app in the market. Um, a lot of people still think that uh, Easy Pesa is something that they can use only if they have a Telenor SIM, which is not true. Uh, so if you have a smartphone, download the app. Uh, if you don't have a smartphone and you don't have a Telenor SIM, we have another short code. So you can dial star double two six two actually to get up and running with uh, something called the Asan mobile account, which is a scheme under the central bank also. What do you need to sign up for Easy Pesa? This, this is a good question. You know, what is, how long does it take? Well, the only two things that you require are a with your phone number, a Pakistani phone number, and a uh, Nadra ID card. That's it. Only two things required. How long does it take? How long does it take you to enter a, a, a phone number and an ID card? Less than a minute. So that's how long it takes to open a, a, and get up and running with Easy Pesa. A lot of people reach out to us and say, look, I don't want to have anything to do with interest and I don't want to have anything to do with banking. Why should I use Easy Pesa? When, well, nearly all the services that we have on the Easy Pesa are actually non-interest related. So um, we, we, we tell people that, look, if you have a problem with interest, fine. But nothing on the Easy Pesa app is interest related. So you should be able to use that. 
We also have the English and Urdu menu for our customers. And one of the things that we're coming up with is is actually a, a Roman uh, menu option because we feel a lot of people who are unable to read English uh, are still able to read Roman. So uh, that's something that uh, that is in the works. Um, if you don't have an Easy Pesa agent or a bank branch nearby, can you still use Easy Pesa? Sure, it's on your mobile phone, right? You can use it wherever you want, whenever you want. Um, and how do you get funds into or in, out of your Easy Pesa account? This is an important question because a lot of people, uh, a lot of people think that oh, you need to go to an agent only to actually put money in your account. And, and why should I go to an agent? I mean, it's a, it's COVID nineteen lockdown anyways, right? Uh, well, actually, you can actually put funds into your Easy Pesa wallet uh, from uh, by moving by doing an IPFT from any bank account. So you can move funds from any bank account into Easy Pesa. It's for it's free right now uh, and it's instant. So you can get up and running with that. And if you have cash and you don't want to go out, we have another service that we built fairly recently, which is with Bikea. So you can actually request a Bikea rider to come to your house and pick up your cash. And that cash is going to be deposited in your Easy Pesa account, uh, and it's for free. There are no charges on putting money into your Easy Pesa account. To get money out of your Easy Pesa account, you can go to an Easy Pesa shop. You can actually use your debit card to go into an ATM, any ATM across Pakistan, and withdraw money from there. Or you can just IPFT that those funds into any other bank account. So that's there. Um, I often have to make payments of large amounts. Can I? Uh, so, Easy Pesa. We have different types of Easy Pesa accounts, and the basic rule is: the more information that you can give to us as a customer, the more limits that we give to the customer. So, if you go to any Easy Pesa agent and you and you uh, put down your fingerprint, uh, agar aap biometric verification karate, so you get a higher limit automatically. Uh, another myth: Easy Pesa is very expensive. What are the charges on the Easy Pesa services on the Easy Pesa wallet? Uh, the easy pesa over the counter services are expensive no doubt because there are a lot of commissions that need to be given and a lot of other costs involved on the mobile wallet or the easy pesa app um i think there's hardly any service where we charge fun, uh, uh, money i think the only only fee that we charge now today is uh, when you transfer funds to a cnic um there's no fee for putting money into an easy pesa there's no fee to open an easy pesa app uh, account to begin with there is no fee to put money into an easy pesa account there is no fee to pay a bill uh, from an easy pesa account or utility bill there is no fee for airtime or bundle purchase there is no fee on 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 fund transfers um except for the cnic one that i told you about because again the agent commissions evolve on the receiving side uh and for all the other services there is no additional fee for customers at all so the app itself is actually one of the is is nearly absolutely free. So um, yeah, a lot of people who believe that Easy Pesa is expensive um, should try the uh, Easy Pesa account or the Easy Pesa app. I think I already talked about all the things that you can do with the app. Who can you send money to? Um, anybody in Pakistan. You can send money to any bank account, any Easy Pesa wallet, uh, or a CNIC. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna skip the rest because um, I don't think they're very relevant over here. So thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing my presentation. And if um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer.